can describe this to me. Um, so the these are uh, bilateral kidneys having um, uh, multiple uh, cysts uh, of very uh, of very size and shape. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and you want to say the final diagnosis. Uh, this it's is consistent like with polycystic kidney disease, right? What's the mode of inheritance of polycystic kidney disease? Um, it's the the gene uh, PKD1, polycystic uh, kidney uh, disease one. No, no, what's the mode of inheritance? Oh, sorry. Uh, it's an, uh, I think, autosomal dominant. Yeah, so autosomal dominant is adult mm -hmm. type. What yeah. about the children type? What is it called? I'm not sure. Sorry. Do you have a children type? So there is a children type as well, which is an autosomal recessive disease. Uh, they tend to be, um, they tend to, patients tend to not to live more than five years and very rarely, very rarely after 20 years, but sometimes most of the time it's incompatible with life. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's the growth pathology and the mode of inheritance. The question that I need you to answer is what's the pathogenesis of assessed formation okay so uh, it's uh, as we said due to that uh, gene mutation in the pkd1 uh, the autosomal dominant condition so what happens is inactivation to that uh, gene and then uh, the cysts will uh, try uh, try to grow and then outpocketing and then uh, the excessive growth and then it will be separated from the main uh, wall so inactivation outpocketing and growth and separation so yeah, I mean this this bit you want to say it in a better way, right? You want to you want to explain it much better than that. So this is actually the only question that I wanted to ask you in this scenario. So in terms of the prognosis or pathogenesis of assessed, you, initially you will have something called inactivation, right? Mm -hmm. And inactivation, the real tubule cell will start to uh, divide repeatedly, and then outpocketing. Mentioning the titles will not give you the mark. You want to explain what is outpocketing, which is mm -hmm. basically the division will continue until you have a saccule which is fluid, fluid filled, but it's still attached to the cells. Then expansion until it's completely separated. The right division will continue, cysts will start to separate, and the renal tubules will, uh, um, uh, isolated, so forming an isolated sac, which is fluid cell. Isolation and growth, so basically the cyst will continue to expand and further destruction of the kidney parenchyma. And this diagram is quite good. So you have this is one of the cells inactivation by the gene, then uh, you know will continue to progress and form a saccule, which is called the outpocketing that you mentioned. And the, after the saccule, you will have lots of fluid coming in, and that will be expansion forming a, a proper cyst and then uh, separation will continue to grow causing um, uh, sort of compression. All right, what are the complications of polycystic kidney disease? Um, okay, uh, that polycystic kidney disease might cause the hydronephrosis or pinephrosis uh, due to infection. It might also uh, uh, be causing uh, renal stones and in the end it might uh, end up in renal failure. Yeah. Does it have anything to do with hypertension or anemia or anything like that? Um, yeah, it might develop it, the hypertension. The patients will get hypertension as well, even though renal hypertensive, and also they can get anemia due to the decrease of the erythropoietin, chronic kidney disease, and might need renal transplant on the long term. Uh, okay, other organs that can get is liver, ovaries, pancreas, and the spleen. What are what is the commonest presentation in terms of the brain as well? Uh, brain aneurysm. Okay, and uh, what's the commonest presentation of a brain aneurysm? Uh, uh, I think it might lead to subarachnoid hemorrhage. I think, yeah, it's mostly asymptomatic all the time, but it can lead to subarachnoid hemorrhage. And how does subarachnoid hemorrhage present? Um, okay, it's a severe thunderclapping headache. What is a thunderclap headache? Um, I think it's a severe type of headache. Yeah, it's basically the worst type of headache that the patient will get. But what is a sentinel headache? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. 
So it's actually a question of medicine, which I think is in acute care. So sentinel headache is um, basically the headache that it's the it's type of a thunderclap headache that will can lead to a diagnosis of a ruptured aneurysm and it potentially have a few days uh, um, just before the complete rupture of an aneurysm. All right. So when you, when the blood vessels start to leak, the patient will call complains of sudden severe headache, and this is the time or the alarm to you to diagnose that um, subarachnoid chronic hemorrhage. All right, so we talked about associated brain lesion. What is the type of matching in real transplant? Um, so we do a HLA uh, matching and uh, ABO uh, also cross matching. What are the types of graft rejection? Uh, there is acute graft reduction, uh, hyperacute and acute, and uh, delayed uh, graft reduction. What does it mean? It doesn't mean anything to me, all right? So you want to explain it more? No. So, uh, okay, th there is hyperacute graft reduction, which happen within minutes to an hour, and then there is uh, uh, um, the acute graft reduction, which, uh, which will happen in the first, uh, like, six months, and there is a uh, delayed type, uh, and they are all uh, uh, type of delayed hypersens uh, type of hypersensitivity reactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hyperacute type, it happens in, is it hours, two days, or you said occurs yeah, it's, it's, in minutes, uh, right? In minutes. Mm. Yeah, so within minutes, maybe up to an hour, yeah, you're right. And what's the pathogenesis for that? Um, it's um, a preformed antibodies against the 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 transplanted kidney. Yeah, correct. So it might it might be actually due to the able matching, right? So so you know if the patient had sort of like a preformed antibodies for certain RBCs or uh, the transfusion that they had, right? So mm -hmm. so yeah, so RBCs and platelets clumping can happen, and then interstitial hemorrhage, and uh, the the graft will fail quite immediately and you need to remove it uh, because it's not helpful anymore. The acute time, it can happen. Uh, what's the time frame for that? Uh, within the first few months. So acute is two types, right? There is acute accelerated, right? OK. That can happen in the first week. And there is the acute proper, right? Or the acute, which can happen in the first six months. Do you want to say acute accelerated? Mm -hmm. Or first, um, not six months, 100 days, right? Yeah. within the first week and the acute which can happen in the first 100 days and the pathogenesis for that is um the t cell uh, activation of t cell yeah t cell mediated lymphocytic infiltration and arthritis and the treatment for that is you give uh, the patient the high dose of the steroids yeah? Mm. yeah because it's a lymphatic infiltration the chronic time it can happen you know any time between six months to years yeah, really and then again, it's T cell mediated and immediate yeah. thickening of the graft and the blood vessels, right? So when you want to say this answer in the exam, you want to say start by uh, the classification could be hyperacute, acute accelerated, acute or chronic. With the hyperacute type, it happens within minutes and it's due to complement activation or able mismatching. The acute type it could be accelerated, happens in the first week or um, acute proper having the first 100 days, is T-cell mediated, lymphocytic infiltration can be treated by steroids on the chronic type month to years. So you wanna say basically everything, but in a very smooth and uh, a nice manner, that will cover the whole thing. What's the type of malignancy in immunocompromised patient? Um, is it squamous cell carcinoma of the skin? Squamous cell carcinoma, and um, you have also basal cell carcinoma, lymphoma, lymphoma and Kaposi sarcoma as well, right? You want to see the four of them. 